Hi guys, Michael Firth here, and I'm here to do an interview with Dr. Margie Smith. So welcome, Margie. Thank you, Michael. Now, for those that don't know, uh, Margie is actually a co the co-founder of Smart DNA. Um, she's actually a molecular geneticist with over 30 years experience in genetics. She's also worked in the areas such as cancer, uh, neurogenetics, and recently in the area of uh, nutritional genomics. So if you're a layman like me, you probably don't want to know here the answer to this question. What is a molecular geneticist? Oh, Michael, a molecular geneticist is a scientist that gets enthusiastic about studying DNA and more specifically changes in DNA. So we know that each individual on the planet is genetically unique. So that's really amazing that, you know, none of us are actually genetically the same. So that's why people like me, scientists like me, are really interested in looking at DNA changes because what we want to understand is what effect does that DNA change have on that individual's DNA and more importantly uh, the protein that that gene actually produces, the protein or enzyme that's produced, what effect is that actually having? for that individual. Okay, so the other part of the layman question, um, what is nutritional genomics? So nutritional genomics is really just a, a slight extension on, on what I talked about. Uh, we know that everything that we eat or drink or any supplement that we may take or any uh, pharmacological drug that we may take actually interacts with our DNA. So the best way to describe that is that everything we eat or drink has a molecular consequence. It means that it has an effect on our DNA or our DNA actually then drives how we process uh, that particular food constituent or, or supplement for example. So it's really important for each individual to understand their body's ability to metabolize for example B group vitamins because some people are really exceptionally good at doing that and some people are not very good at doing that. And that actually does have a molecular consequence. Okay. Well, this is actually an area of interest for me because uh, nutritionally, that's that's a focus of mine. And um, I hear the buzzword the, about methylation. And so, what does methylation mean when we're talking about this in DNA? Yeah, methylation definitely is a, a buzzword for for the moment, and certainly a pathway that so many uh, practitioners are, are interested in. Um, and if I can just lead off by actually saying the methylation pathway is involved in so many disease processes from cancer through to birth defects through to um, stress and anxiety responses and even depression. So this pathway really is involved in helping our cells to faithfully replicate for example. So if there's one thing that we want our DNA to do is to that is to faithfully replicate and keep dividing well. So it's involved in our DNA repair. Uh, the methylation pathway uh, allows us for example for our brain to wake up and function properly. Mm -hmm. um, some people may feel that they have brain fog for example during the day um, and that's actually a result of most likely their methylation pathway or their neurotransmitters not being turned on properly. Um, so the best analogy I can give you is uh, if we've got lights on a, a Christmas tree, we've decorated the Christmas tree, we've turned the lights on. Some people, those lights may be quite dim if they're not methylating properly. Um, individuals may actually, actually have sleep problems as well, problems with getting to sleep because they're not methylating properly. They may experience more stress. And whereas for other people, if they are very good at methylating, um, they they may have their lights going on in the right um, in the right sequence on that Christmas tree, so they actually are able to function um, better without uh, any intervention um, in their methylation pathway. So it's it's really important. And the other aspect that's really exciting to me is that you know we're all expected to have to be happy, okay? But it's a biochemical event. So mm. some people, in terms of their brain's biochemistry, have more biochemical happiness, and some people have less. So you know, we can actually then start looking at that for people. So it's an amazing thing, really, this whole methylation pathway. This is possibly why I bounce out a bit in the morning and I get a strange look from Nicole. There you go, here we go. <laughs> so, so some people, uh, when their pathway is attended to, will actually then start slowly benefiting from, from their pathway being attended to. So that's important. And I think the other key um, message around uh, the methylation pathway is that a byproduct of it is that we produce homocysteine. Now, homocysteine, we want to reduce back to 
cysteine, okay, so that we can actually start the pathway going around again. Now, cysteines we know are incredibly important because if there's something that enzymes love in our bodies, it's a cysteine molecule. So what we know is from our methylation pathway that some people are very good at naturally producing cysteines and some people have a reduced capacity to produce these cysteines. They may also, if they're not reducing homocysteine particularly well, have elevated levels of homocysteine, which has a, a, a consequence in terms of heart health. Okay. So, so the methylation pathway is part of our detoxification and it's also a part of the pathway where we do produce cysteine molecules so we can produce then some glutathione naturally. Just on that, the glutathione again is, is a, an area of focus uh, that I've looked into a bit. So, you know, in terms of glutathione and, and detoxification, tell us more about that. So glutathione, we really need it. It's, it's one of our master antioxidants for our bodies and it has so many roles. For example, um, it reduces cellular oxidative stress, so that's incredibly important. And we also have a glutathione detoxification pathway as well. Now, the amazing thing about uh, these cysteine molecules or glutathione is that they have a thiol group attached to them, which is like a little arm, whereby it, they grab hold of toxins and they are removed from our body. Now, some individuals will have GSTT1, which is an enzyme, and GST, um, GSTM1, which is another enzyme, and they are able to detoxify reasonably well. But we know that 50% of the Caucasian population have GSTM1 deleted, and around 90% of the Asian population have GSTT1 deleted. So when you think about our environment and toxins and pollutants, and then you know those statistics in terms of your likelihood of having those enzymes deleted, then we start to get some understanding of how difficult it is for some people to actually detoxify. So for some individuals, they may not have those enzymes at all. That means they didn't get a copy from their mum or dad mm. of GSTT1 or GSTM1. So that has a significant effect now on their body's ability to detoxify. What that actually translates into is having to use a non-enzymatic pathway, which is not as efficient. So it's possible to get into toxic overload. So those enzymes are very, very important. Uh, they also depend upon levels of vitamin C. Um, and for those individuals having glutathione support is certainly going to help them. They need more cysteines. They basically are individuals who don't have enough cysteine molecules in terms of being able to detoxify. Well, this is fascinating stuff. So if someone's, this sort of highlights now, if someone's taking a particular nutritional supplement, not getting the same effect as somebody else, they can now look into it, get a DNA test and discover how their body works, can't they? We actually then have cellular knowledge, as it were, in terms of how that individual is able to detoxify. Um, and as I said, there's a spectrum. Some individuals will be able to do that very, very well, and other individuals will not be able to do that as well. So you have to think uh, if an individual is not particularly good at detoxifying, either through their methylation or glutathione pathway, uh, if they are given uh, you know, nutritional support in that arena, that uh, they're actually going to start detoxifying. So it's about going low and slow for some individuals when they are approaching how to improve their body's ability to detoxify. Okay, so in terms of getting a DNA test, um, you, you, we can get a practitioner that someone can talk to, yeah? Smart DNA uh, must work with a qualified practitioner, mm -hmm. um, so we can provide uh, that service to qualified practitioners. Fantastic, well for those that are listening, um, one of the people that we've worked with uh, a bit is actually Sarah Kenny, who is actually an accredited uh, and qualified um, uh, practitioner. practitioner to work with on the smart DNA uh, process so she'd be able to help you if uh, you need to look a little further so thank you for your interview today I think it's thank been you, really Michael. enlightening thank you so much Michael